ladies and gentlemen, nerds and neckbeards, welcome to another episode of Westeros Win Everly, 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 Everly. Thanks, Tana, for doing the intro yeah, tonight. Yeah, hey, Dave, yeah. I have tremendous news. What's the news? We reached 5,000 listens today. Oh, my God. What <laughs> Who are you people what? listening to us? Yeah, why aren't you writing us emails and tweeting to us? <laughs> or, for that matter, why are you even listening to us to begin with? <laughs> to begin with. Oh, my God. A couple of knuckleheads. Um, speaking of Twitter and oh, people yeah? tweeting us, I did my first ever Twitter poll today. That's right. I voted on it. And 10 people voted on it. All, <laughs> all in favor of the one that I voted for? I don't know. We have to check the we'll results check. right we'll now. Let's check, check it results. live. Um, with 20 minutes left to go, I was getting ready to come over here tonight. There, 10 people had uh, responded to the to the poll, oh. which was about who, uh, how do you pronounce P-E-T-Y-R? Our, uh, our podcast today is about Littlefinger. And it was either... We have a total of 50 votes now. Check hey, it live. And uh, 80%. Yeah. Oh, 80. That's a big one. 80% come say on. Peter. No, come 20 on. 20% say Patire. Oh, God, it's Patire. No one calls it Patire. It's Patire. If look, it's look, Tyrion, look. it's Patire. Look, yeah. look, just admit <laughs> you're wrong. The did majority you, of the public. Did you vote 50 times? I no, mean, I, <laughs> one won't let me vote 50 times. You have to have a Twitter account to vote. <laughs> you opened 49, 49 fake, fake Twitter, Twitter accounts. If I did that, it would be a lot higher in my favor. Okay? Just saying. Uh, it's Pataire. It's, it's Peter. It's totally Pataire. It's Peter. So here's the thing. When it's just written P E T Y R, to yeah. my mind, it's Pataire because Roy Detrice. The guy that reads the audiobook so brilliantly says Pataire. But when the two words are together, when it's Peter Baelish, it's Peter for me, Baelish. So I'm sure... It's Peter. Yeah, during this episode, I'm going to be flip-flopping a little bit. But when it's just written normal, P-E-T-Y-R, it's, it's Peter. It's, it's Pataire. It's Peter. Come on, Tyrion. It's the same T-Y-R. It doesn't matter. Tyr. It doesn't matter. No? No. Hey, uh, but you know, we already it's, said before, however you pronounce it. You have, to think, of, you have to think of that T, the, the yeah. Y-R as the one syllable, because it's P with the T, T, and then Y-R is your, look at mirror, okay? Mirror yeah. is spelled what? M-Y-R. There you go. It's not It could be Mir, you don't know. It's, it's not Mayur, <laughs> all right? It's Peter, all right? All right. So well, speaking of that, yeah. yes, yeah. our episode tonight... All about... All about Peter. Petire Baelish. Peter Baelish. <laughs> or we could just agree to call him Littlefinger. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. That'll, that'll make my life a lot easier. Speaking of Littlefingers... Yes? What did we shoot today? Oh, yeah. So, um, to drink along at home, to play along with us, we decided an appropriate pregame shot oh. would be to do a little finger of vodka. So we did... Um, You'll be happy to know no fingers were her harmed <laughs> in the making of these shots. Yeah, I had to explain to Dave that you can measure alcohol in actual fingers, like three fingers of gin, or, you know, I'll have two fingers of whiskey, um, and it's an actual, like, finger width. And apparently I also learned that you can measure a horse in yeah. hands. Yes, horses are measured in hands, which is such a weird way of measuring, but that's how it goes. So yeah, we had our little finger of vodka. And actually, um, if you guys have access to San Pellegrino Limonata, I brought that over. It's sparkling lemon beverage. So it's basically just carbonated lemon juice or lemonade. It doesn't taste like lemonade. It's probably got no sugar in yeah, it. Yeah, it's got no sugar. So it's just like yeah, sparkling it's, lemon. It's sparking, sparkling lemon water. Lemon juice. Lemon water. Uh, but it's really good if you're making whiskey sours. But um, mm. we're not making whiskey sours tonight. No, we're not. Tonight, I figured, in celebration of our 5,000 listens, which is 4,999 4, more than I thought we would ever get. Yep, true. Uh, I wanted to do a mock teeny. In other words, in honor of having so many listeners, <laughs> our drinking podcast has no alcohol. So I decided that maybe we should be sober. <laughs> this episode may or may not suck. <laughs> It's important. We'll let you decide, the listeners. <laughs> it's important to keep 
keep shaking things up, you know? It's you know, like you're there's right. like a person out there that loves a song of ice and fire books, but they and they always wanted to play along with us, but they don't drink. Well now is your chance. Well, congratulations to all of you in AA <laughs> and for those of you that are on the twelve step program, yeah. you can now listen to our podcast and think of how terrible we sound. Ignore the fact that we did shots of vodka before we started. Well, we needed something. <laughs> Just to steady the old nerves. Just to just to stop calm us down. Shakes. Couldn't stop it earlier. Yeah. So. so this is a we're drinking you know our mockingbird mocktini. Yes. We are drinking cranberry grape juice with lemon lime seltzer. Ooh. Yeah, on ice. There's one frozen strawberry in each pint glass. Uh, if you wanted to be fancy, it's a it's a purple drink. It ends up being purple because I figured. Peter, uh, tires. Um, Peter. Yeah, he always he Proud always has lavender and purples, and you know he's just those are some of his colors, purple and cream, and he's just very dapper looking a lot of the time. So Pur I figured purple was a good. Purple color is for the color of royalty. Yes. And yes. I will be happy to say that oh. this drink is uh -huh. not making me want to puke. <laughs> it's ice cold, which it's I know is cold. one of it's your favorites. One of my requirements. <laughs> yep. So there it's ice know. cold. It's pretty delicious, actually. And you know what, Dave? We haven't started our... You know what? This is why we have to drink, because yeah. we didn't start off... We should just redo it. With our trademark. Let's just redo it right with now. Our, with our words to live by. That's right. Let's let's do it. Can we do a redo? Doodly-doo. <laughs> <laughs> Doodly-doo. Doodly-doo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, nerds and neckbeards, welcome to another edition of Westeros when early. All men. Must drink. There we go. That's our right. Oh, there we go. That's our you, start. You know what? It threw us off because you introed us. I know. You know? Well, I had to try to shake it up. You know? Gotta keep no it alcohol. Fresh. No Dave starting it off. God. You know? We're going. Oh, and I haven't prepared any stump Dave. There's no stump Dave tonight. No, I, I could. Know. I there's a couple I could think of off the top of my head. Well, if you uh, say one of them is how do you pronounce uh, <laughs> Mr. Beatish, the Baelish's name, I'll get that one right because it's Peter, not Pattire. Uh, one point for every title that Mr. Baelish has. Ooh, that's a so, good one. And there's only three that I can think of. So if you think of more than three titles, there's only three you can think of. Yeah, then you get extra Ooh. points. All right. Well, let's see. There's the Master of Coin. That's one. There's uh, Littlefinger. Uh, yep. Yeah. That's a name. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. That's a title. I don't know if it's a title though. No. Well, I guess like an, in that a name is a title. Hold on, I have to see if I wrote it down anywhere. Mean, the Littlefinger. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, Littlefinger is one of them. <laughs> yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. And then there's one more. Uh, people call him Lord. Yep. But what is he Lord of? Ooh. I guess there's two more that you could. Uh, Lord of say. the brothels, right? Isn't that mm, what they call no. them? Lord of the whores, something like that. No, this has actually to do with the lands he's in control of. Oh, the ire. But what do they call him? I don't remember. Oh, eh. ah, you don't get stump it. Dave. <laughs> Dave was stump. We, like, we need like rrr, rrr, Dave is stump. Like well, we need a sound clip for. We it. need a. We need a producer to do that. <laughs> if only we had friends. If only the, we had friends. The Lord Protector of the Veil. Oh, yeah. yes, of and, course, uh, Lord and Protector of the Veil. It occurred to me while we were talking that he could also be called Lord of Harrenhal, because that's what he's... That's, that's true. The title Technically, he is now given. the Lord of Harrenhal. That's right. Yep, so that he would be of high enough nobility uh, to be able to ask Lysa Aaron for her hand in marriage. Mm. So Tywin Lannister raises him up. Uh, to Lord of Harrenhal in name only because at the time Rob Stark and uh, is control still, Harrenhal. Yeah, That's right, Harrenhal. So, but he needed the title in order to get Lysa, and I'm sure you it was an what? added delight. I don't want to do this to you. What? Her name is Lisa. It's not. It's Lysa. Just like it's Peter. Uh, and you know, it's, if it's we had Lisa. George reading any of this, yeah. it would all be with such a thick New Jersey accent yeah. that none of our squabbling over what their names actually are would matter. Because yep. it's just, uh, it's whatever his, it's two, name. the it's two youths. It's the two whatever, youths, yeah. it says, you know. <laughs> So, yep. Um, so who is Peter? Who is, uh, who is Peter Baelish, Dave? Well, you know, he grew up with uh, Caitlin Tully and, yep. and Lisa. Tully. Oh, I'm going to continue um, to say Lysa. That's Lysa. fine. I, I, I'm not as yeah. pissed off about that one as I am about Pattire. <laughs> Jesus fuck. Hey, can you uh, go uh, Pattire that, uh, 
that thing on my car, you know, <laughs> that tire. Can you go put, tire? Can you that's, go? Can you go put on that that tire? Yeah, tires. Yeah. Isn't that a British spelling? T-Y-R-E? That is the that is T Y R E is the yeah. British spelling of. Of, of tire. tire. Yeah, so right. there you go. You're just proving my point. No, I'm not because there's no E at put the end tire. of his name. Put tire. It's there's no E at the end to make the Y sound <laughs> like an I. All right? God. Leave it to the engineer who doesn't know English to know English. From the comic we'll let, book. We'll let our listeners legit. decide who is correct. Yeah, good. yeah. You know what? Yeah. I want I'll do at another least, Twitter poll with I want 10 a, responses. I want at least three tweets yeah. or something. <laughs> Telling us that from it's who? pronounced from, from no from our listeners. I'll tweet you. Yeah, I know you'll tweet me. <laughs> oh, my, my, whole, my, whole, my whole my whole Twitter feed is just full of <laughs> at Tana Ford, at Tana Ford, at Tana Ford. I'm like the pesky friend you never really wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I don't know how I inherited you. It's just it's like your kickball. I you, mean, I know you that's how. You made the mistake I... of of accidentally getting me on your kickball team one time. Yep, that was the, my very first season, and yeah. I just started. They just made me captain, and yeah. then all of a sudden, I was talking to Mr. Hanscom, who ran the, oh God, yeah. uh, who ran yeah. the, uh, <clears throat> ran the kickball league. Kickball league, yeah. I was getting there. Mm-hmm. The shot got to me, I guess, because this juice is not. I know this is going to be an interesting experiment to see if we actually remember names of things and if we can stay on topic or on point. We're already on topic. We're on kickball. I think it has nothing to do with the alcohol. <laughs> it has very little to do with our alcohol oh, intake. <laughs> absolutely none. It's just this is just us rambling and com- going completely off topic. So, but, Pata- uh, so Patire Baelish. Yeah, Peter Baelish. Yep. You know what? I swear to God. <laughs> keep going. Just keep talking about him. Peter Baelish yep. uh, grew up with Caitlin Tully yep. and uh, and uh, Lisa. Lisa. Yeah. And uh, he was in love and with And Ed Muir. Caitlin. Don't forget Ed Muir. Ed, Ed Muir, of course. Yeah. And um, he was just a low, low-born yeah. kid who just hung out with them all the yeah. time and was uh, kind of in love with Caitlin yeah. and uh, Catelyn and... Uh, his, they kissed. I think they had their first kiss. If yeah, that's if I did. remember correctly, she, they used to so. practice kissing together. And but do you know how he became a ward of Hoster Tollies? Laid on me. The War of the Nine Penny Kings, which is laid out in detail in the World Book, which I'm sure all of our audience has. Mm-hmm. There's got to be an audiobook version of it, but I don't have it. In any I don't case, know. That'd be really long. I know, but I all I do is sit and draw comics all day, so I have plenty of time. All to I do to is stuff. sit, sit, and draw <laughs> comics. I don't know. Okay, good. That would be the wrap of my That'll life. That would be the wrap of your life. <laughs> so uh, his father, um, or his grandfather rather, was a sellsword from Bravos. Who's, Ooh. yep. Oh, and He's I have another. Yeah, sword. so I have another. Um, here's another Stump Dave for you, impromptu Stump Dave. All right, lay it on me. What personal sigil did Peter Baelish take as his own insignia? I really want to say it's. Uh, it was a bird, a little bird. What kind? Uh. I want to say Mockingjay. It but is. Oh, but, it's so close. But all that all that makes me think of is uh, yeah. Hunger Hunger yeah. Games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really he volunteers I'm, tribute. Uh, seriously, to all this all I hear all I hear all I see in my head right now is the Mockingjay <laughs> pin with the arrow, yeah. and I'm picturing it on yep. Peter Baelish's yep. chest. Oh, it's man. very close, though. It's, I do know it's a bird, but it's a mocking bird. Yeah, that's mocking his. Bird. Yeah. He takes a mocking bird as a sigil. And so he uh, he says to Ned at some point, you you could turn all King's Landing over, and you'll never find you know one man that has a mockingbird emblazoned on his chest. Meaning you won't find uh, any, any men, men that are sworn to me. But don't think I don't have any friends. Right. Uh, and so, but his grandfather was a sellsword from Bravos, whose sigil was. Do you know what it was? I don't know actually. The Titan's head. Oh. He took his sigil. So. Bravosi has the titan yeah, that's guarding the bay. That's right. Yeah. And its eyes have the fire, the like fire in the dark or whatever. Mm. They kind of light up. Um, I don't know how to make my phone not buzz. So I'm going to throw it over there. Really? Whatever, man. It's on silent, but it's buzzing. That's not silent. That's vibrate mode. Well, listen, Dave. One of us is an engineer. One yep. of us is an artist. Yep. Who recently did well, an update I on guess her phone. I forgot females okay. like vibrating things more than <laughs> silent yeah, things. Yeah, we do. So, okay. 
loud and vibrating. Loud. Oh, Those it has are... to be loud? It has <laughs> to be loud? As opposed to silent. Oh, gotcha. Right. Okay. The opposite of the silent. The opposite would be of loud. silent yeah. would be loud, yes. So, yeah. Those are. I guess I'm so. surprised you don't like the train then. Because that I love thing, our train. That thing is. I love our train. Oh, then that explains it because it's it's loud <laughs> and it like, shakes oh, the there house. It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey. Oh hey. Oh. I can't. <laughs> okay. It's so definitely not the alcohol that makes our podcast. It really isn't. Like this. <laughs> Although we did just do a shot, so talk to us in an hour when Fair the enough. shot wears off or Fair whatever. Enough. So, um. Great granddaddy had the Titan's head, okay. the Titan of Bravos, as that he took as his sigil after honorable service during the you know War of the Nine Penny Kings. Or rather, his uh, grandfather had a son, right? His grandfather had his dad, right? And the dad took the sigil of the Titan of Bravos and became a warrior that fought in the War of the Nine Penny Kings, befriending and saving Hoster Tolly, Catelyn's dad. Mm -hmm. So they became fast friends in war. And so Hosta, who is a big lord, said, give me your kid, I'll foster him. And so Peter Baelish goes over to River Run to be fostered as a kid. Now, why do they call him Littlefinger? Because <clears throat> he can do more with his little finger than <laughs> some guy can do with although, his cock. Although that's true. Whoa! <laughs> you took it to a cock level? <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> There is a joke that Miranda Royce makes about his little finger. No, but yeah. it's because he's from the fingers. So uh, if we had our map, which I did not bring over. So he is the little, yeah, he's meaning off, the small. Yeah, he's off then, the littlest finger gotcha. of the fingers. So gotcha. he takes Sansa there once he uh, quote unquote rescues her from King's Landing. They go to his meager holdings on the littlest finger. But that's where he gets his name. Uh, he has gray green eyes and a pointy little chin beard. That's true. What he, he does? He was master of coin when we met him, and that's kind of his. Well, his he's whole more MO. than master of coin. He's mm -hmm. he's this uh, brothel. He runs all the yeah. brothels in basically Many. King's Landing. He does not own Shatires, though. Mm. Should, he doesn't own Shatires because when uh, he finally takes Ned to Shatires brothel at the end of Game of Thrones, or towards the middle end of Game of Thrones. He says, you know, oh, it's a fine establishment. I, I should probably buy it, or I'm thinking about buying it, which, you know, is just meaning he doesn't own that one. Right. Which is good to know. But he does own many of the other ones. Yeah. And, and the one uh, that they keep Jane Poole in yeah. for a while. Uh, and so the very interesting thing, as many of you guys know, I only listened to the audiobooks, and it wasn't until this past Christmas that I got the physical books from the series and was able to read through them and it just totally blew open my understanding and my ability to like sort through this information and i never put it together before until now that it was Patire that arranged for Catelyn to come from Winterfell to King's Landing that Peter Baelish had Lysa write that letter um, that Catelyn gets early in Game of Thrones saying that the Lannisters murdered, poisoned her husband, John Arryn, and it was the Lannisters. And at the end of Storm of Swords, in the final chapter, you know, right when Lys is about to get thrown out the moon door by Peter, um, she's confessing all this stuff in a mad, like, uh, you know, frenzy, uh, you yeah. know, and, and all of these secrets come tumbling out of her. Uh, and it's really, I think that's a real pivotal moment well, that's for when, Peter's character. That's when Peter says, well, I can't have this anymore mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. gives her the shove right out the moon door. Yeah, I have. Which, by the way, do you know why it's called the moon door? Why is it called the moon door? Because it's the butthole of the iron. <laughs> like when you pant someone and you moon them? Yeah. <laughs> And that's the door because you can See, go in or out that you're, way. You're looking, you're looking up at somebody like on the side of the castle, and it just looks like they drop trow, yeah, which is yeah. hanging out the side of the mountain. Yeah. Oh, that's the moon door. That's the Every moon door. Every time somebody um, comes out, it looks like a little turd. That's right. That's right. When they drop someone out the moon door, it's like whoa. <laughs> George is such a magnificent writer. I mean, he really is. Think about it. It's not. They didn't do it because like when they open it, the moon shines through. The moon is fucking still up in the sky. Oh my god. So, no, the moon and falcon. Isn't the moon part of the... Or is it just a falcon that is the Aaron sigil? It's the butthole. It's the moon and the falcon. It's, the it's part butthole. of their sigil. It's got to be part of it. It's the butthole. It's not the, the butthole. Iron. It's not about dropping trout, Dave. You know what, listeners? I want you to tweet me. 
that his name is Peter and that it's the butthole of the ire. The next All poll right. idea, which will hopefully have 11 responses and not 10. I'm glad I got This one had 50. Did, did we really? Yeah. Well, I tweeted that or I like retweeted it or said something about, you know, how, what a social media goddess I am with my 10 <laughs> responses to my first ever Twitter poll. I, I don't understand. And so then 40 other people weighed in. I don't understand. And they all it's weighed in for the wrong one. There's a time limit? I don't... Well, you get to set your time limit. What did so you set it to? The, I wanted it to end right before we podcasted okay. so we'd be able to tell how many people participated. Because I figured, you know, a little pre-planning for our... Yeah. Big mocktail event. 50 votes. Peter, who are you 80 people saying it's Peter? They're smart, whoever did they, they are. I'm so glad that they did that. Does, it, does he get called Peter in the show? I, you know what? I, I think he does get called Peter. Yeah, well, that's so. what it is then. Most people call him Littlefinger, I think. Well, what we need to talk no. about, what I would like us to talk about is identity. Because George is being very clever in the way he writes about identity. Um... You there think he's times, got dual personalities do. when sometimes he's Littlefinger and sometimes he's Peter Baelish? Yes, especially, um, most pronouncedly, when we're seeing um, the world through Sansa's eyes. Mm. Because when he gets creepy and skeevy, she connects him, he becomes Littlefinger. Mm. And when she's feeling warm and like he's her father and they have that connection, he's Peter. And she feels like, you know, genuine warmth towards him yeah. or, you know, if not affection then, you know, sort of uh, some mixture of affection and awe and, and this stuff. And so I think Did identity is Did you notice that she actually does refer to him yes. differently? Yes, and, and I've made a couple of marks in my books so that we can go over a couple of chapters. But I thought maybe we could listen. I did a, a little recording of, um, of Peter's secrets. So okay. this is at the end of Storm when Lysa is trying to throw Sansa out the moon door. These are some of the... Out the butthole. Yeah, Got out it. the butthole. Out the butthole. I just, the idea of a butt <laughs> off the mountain and it's, Sansa being pushed just, out of yeah, it. Yeah, it's just like, you know, something like this. It's like, open the moon door. And it just looks like a butthole. Yeah, it's just a butthole. Imagine oh. if, if the carving of the eye was like this. in a giant or God, something. Somebody, well, it's called oh. the giant's lance. Yeah. So... <laughs> But you they describe the Irie you, as being like a Someone draw this. You're towers. the artist. I want a drawing of the Ire right there on my whiteboard. And it's, it instead of like, butthole? yeah, with a little butthole. All right, yeah, I can yeah. draw it. Here, you Here, I'll play up. this while we play yeah, this. You play that. What clip is this so I this can tell is, everyone? Yeah, this is um, This is Lisa called Peter's Secrets. Yep, that's what it is. All right, here's Peter's Secrets, everyone. Littlefinger, my cousin. Have you been at the wine again? You ought not to talk so much. We don't want Elaine to know more than she should, do we? Or Marillion. Lady Lysa ignored that. Cat never gave you anything. It was me who got you your first post. Who made John bring you to court so we could be close to one another. You promised me you would never forget that. Nor have I. We're together, just as you always wanted. Just as we always planned. Joss let go of Sansa's hair. I won't. I saw you kissing in the snow. She's just like her mother. Catelyn kissed you in the God's Wood. But she never meant it. She never wanted you. Why did you love her best? It was me. It was always me. I know, love. He took another step. And I am here. All you need to do is take my hand. Come on. He held it out to her. There's no cause for these tears. Tears, tears, tears. She sobbed hysterically. No need for tears. But that's not what you said in King's Landing. You told me to put the tears in John's wine, and I did. For Robert and for us. And I wrote Catelyn and told her the Lannisters had killed my lord husband, just as you said. That was so clever. You were always clever. I told father that. I said, Katar's so clever. He'll rise high. He will. He will. And he's sweet and gentle. And I have his little baby in my belly. She seems so awesome, doesn't she? Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what? I, yeah. I didn't remember yeah. that Peter Baelish poisoned John Arryn. I didn't either until I was reading the books. Like, that's Roy Detrice reading yeah. it. You know, and I've listened to it four full times through at least. And you hear but that never... the tears, and that's that's the poison that yeah. they all talk about. I the haven't tears looked at the of lice or the tears of lice. I haven't looked at the butthole yet. So here we go, Dave. It's oh okay. my god. 
So you're thinking that it looks <clears throat> the Irie is on yeah. a slip of mountain called the Giant's Lance. That's right. It has seven slender towers and it's built into the side of the mountain with the rest of the mountain going up above it. So it's not on the summit, it's kind of on the almost summit. Almost summit. And then the, the moon door uh, opens onto air, you know, and there's gonna be like a mountain range behind it here, you know. Yep. Uh, but right below it is the Way Castle sky, right? So it's sky, stone, and then the gates of the moon. Yeah. Or there might be a third Way Castle. I don't remember. I don't remember. But either. I there there's like little tiny depots, uh, little sort of like yeah, filling it's, stations. It's it's hard to get all the way up yep. there. Yeah. But the base of the mountain is uh, the gates of the moon. I think is sort of the or maybe I, I I think I don't know off the top of my head. But here we have a little butthole. You think it looks like a butt hanging off the yep, side? that's exactly what it looks like. And then people come out here and like grab a different color. And they look like little turds. And they come shooting out here like I make him fly. Yeah. We'll post make this him picture. fly. Yeah, that's a. We'll that post is, this picture. We'll post this picture. <laughs> Tana perfectly drew the butthole of the ire. <laughs> Okay, it, and then this is ex the Way Castle Sky, done. and then this is the Way Castle Stone, and then down here at the bottom of the mountain, we've got the Gates of the Moon, where Nestor Royce is. Can, can you point to the butthole so I can get a nice, get a nice little arrow here that says Butthole of the Moon. <laughs> oh God, Butthole Moon Door. Butthole Moon Door, there it is. Butthole of the ivory yep there you go the moon door i can't believe you this is what you've always imagined is this, this is hole. <laughs> oh and then we have like little catacombs here the sky cells kind of hang out over the edge like a little honeycomb the dungeon being you know that's right yeah, that's open right. and so people just like jump to their deaths instead of being up high in the towers they're down like that so there we have it. We'll post it on our uh, Facebook page. Tana Ford Designs is what we've been using. We should probably start a Tumblr. But honestly, guys, who has the time? Who has the time? Yeah. I was thinking today we should start a Westeros Whateverly Twitter. We but, should. But that's a lot of work. Mm, we can, we're so small, we can just keep using our own yeah, and cobbling yeah. it together. I'm, yeah. I keep telling myself our cobbled together podcast is what is charming about it. The fact that we're just in yeah. As soon as we get as soon as we get syndicated fancy. or Kick fancy or anything like that, everyone's gonna be like, "Fuck those guys. Yep. We're gonna listen to Radio Westeros. <laughs> they actually know what they're talking I about." Know. And you would literally, literally listen to any other podcast with us. Yeah. If you want All exact right. We analysis. now have a beautiful picture of the butthole yeah. of the ire. Yeah. And, uh, it does look like a butthole. You know, now I'm going to imagine it like this. I'm sorry. <laughs> can't unsee it, right? You just I can't. can't. Un you can't unsee it. And it's going to make like a little fart noise every time, <laughs> every time, so time someone so <laughs> Make him fly, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is such high bra literature is so highbrow. You know what? We <laughs> Okay, so Can we drink with our pinkies out the rest of this show? And we don't even have alcohol. There's no alcohol in these drinks. <laughs> God, it's uh, true what they say. This, this experiment of mine is backfiring, it's really. It's totally backfiring. I thought we would appear more sober and, no. like, serious. I, I think we seem worse. <laughs> Maybe when we drink, we yeah. even actually, like, monitor oh, God, ourselves yeah. a little bit, you that, know? This that is, mellows us out or something. Yeah, it's like, mm. oh, all right. Let's see. We've got, um, so, the Tears of Lice, right? we got to talk about this. He has... Do you think it's ironic that his her name is Lysa and Man. they're the Tears of Lice? I don't tears think of so. lists. I don't think so. They're her tears. But there was a, an interesting um, exchange between um, Maester, Grand Maester Pycelle and Varys because Varys mentions the tears of lice and then Grand Maester Pycelle like snaps awake and yeah. then squints at him. So like it was Varys saying to Master Pycelle he knows that he poisoned him but... Or maybe, maybe Master Pycelle gave them to Lisa. Maybe right. Lisa was yeah. asking oh, for maybe. them. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. But or something. So, but I mean... I vaguely remember someone going through Master Maester Pycelle's yep. stuff, and there was, was Miles Tyrion, missing. Yeah, it was Tyrion. There was something missing, right? Oh, well, I know Tyrion takes something. Maybe he takes Tears of Bliss, but not at that point in the story. He mm -hmm. takes them later after after he becomes Hand in the next book. Yeah. But so Petire, so why does he do this? Is yeah. the question. Well, I mean, we kind of see his plan is to get. I, I'd love to hear your theory. This is just what I'm spitballing yep. on top of my head. Yeah. Is I bet you're going to say the same um, thing. He he wanted to get Ned Stark and Catelyn Tully to King's Landing. Yep. But, exactly. But to <clears throat> what end? Did yep. he 
Did he honestly believe that uh, Ned Stark was going to be a good hand of the king and was going to be do good for the realm or something? Or did he think that he, or did he know, do you think that he planned this whole war, basically, and said, look, I'm going to trick, I'm going to trick Ned into thinking, Ned and Catelyn, Catelyn yep. into thinking that the Lannisters are this evil, manipulative people. Yep. Which, you know, Tricked okay. them into coming to King's Landing. Tricked them into coming into King's Landing. Yep. And then push Ned in the direction that John Aaron was going. Because I know Ned will not let let it go. Why? Where John Aaron might have brushed it under the table or yep. hit it. Ned is too honorable and too loyal to, to Robert, I think, that so he would conflict- ever... Is that um, the idea is that John Aaron was killed because he found out about the truth of the bastardy, the incest babies between Cersei and Jaime. But that's what Peter wants us to believe. Well, so that's so that's the sort of conclusion that we are led to believe at the end of Game of Thrones. Now, Storm right. of Swords is the very next book. Is that right? No, Clash of Kings. No, it's, I think Storm uh, is second. What do we have here? This is book three. So then it's yeah. Clash of Kings, and then it's Storm. Right. And it's at the very end of Storm. So thousands of pages later that we find out Peter, or Petire, was really behind Peter. the murder of John Aaron or played a significant part. And why would he do that? Why would he get Lysa to murder her husband and then to send Kat and, and Ned this letter? And I believe, and I think, you know, I, I cannot possibly be alone in this, it's because he carries a torch for Catelyn. He loves her. And he is manipulating, he is working to get her to come to him. After 15 years You think it's since the sole purpose of him doing all this is to get to Catelyn? I want to make the case that although he has his little finger in a lot of different pies, yeah. he has been working toward one aim his whole life. Putting his little finger in the Catelyn putting, pie. Yes, putting his little finger in the Catelyn pie. And yeah, and um, I like the analogies that lesbians <laughs> come up with for these kind of things. It's. I still think I'm super clever with my finger dance and uh, showing what's her name, uh, the Greyjoy, Asha Greyjoy, oh, my finger dance. Yeah. Come on, that's amazing. That was really good. Come on. That was really good. Oh, that's so brilliant! I'm such ah, a genius. God. <laughs> um, okay, so when we first meet. I want you to imagine this, okay? In a world. In a world. Where Tana is telling a story. You, I think I probably have to read the passages first, but we'll just, like, jump right in. Okay, jump us in. Petire loved Catelyn when they were kids. Peter loved Catelyn. Yes. Okay. Loved I'm Catelyn. Gonna, every time you say Petire, okay. I'm going to say Peter. Say, I'll try to just say Peter then to just try to make it a little bit easier. <laughs> um, I'm very but, stubborn. But, it, and so we know, you know, we're going back through all of these books to try to, like, connect the dots, right? Yeah. And so we've got this passage on page one, 161 of Game of Thrones. So, you know, pretty early in the first quarter of the mm-hmm. first book. And it's the time when Littlefinger meets Ned, Eddard Stark, for the very first time. So what do they think of each other? And we're in, uh, Eddard, it's an Eddard chapter, okay? And this is what he has to say. Um, so, uh, he's, Ned has just met the small council, so he's meeting Varys, Lord Renly, Lord, uh, King Robert's younger brother, who's super gay, uh, Littlefinger, and, uh, Pycelle. Um, Lord Renly spends more on his clothing than half the ladies in, in the court, Littlefinger quipped, and it was true enough, uh, then they go sort of back and forth. Renly says, the way you dress, for one, there are worse crimes the way you dress, for one. Littlefinger ignored the jibe. He eyed Ned with a smile on his lips that bordered on insolence. I have hoped to meet you for some years, Lord Stark. No doubt Lady Caitlin has mentioned me to you. She has, Ned replied with a chill in his voice. The sly arrogance of the comment rankled him. I understand you knew my brother Brandon well. Renly Baratheon laughed. Varys shuffled over closer to listen. Rather too well, Littlefinger said. I still carry a token of his esteem. Did Brandon speak of me too? Often, and with some heat, said Ned, hoping it would end it. He had no patience for this game that they played, this dueling with words. I should have thought that the heat ill suits you, Starks, Littlefinger said. Here in the South, 
They say you are all made of ice and melt when you ride below the, ne- below the neck. I do not plan on melting soon, Lord Baelish. You may count on it. So, like, Baelish is just sending barbs at Ned. He hates this guy, right? Well, because he's <clears throat> he's married to Caitlin. Catelyn. Yep. <clears throat> and you remember, so Brandon was betrothed to Catelyn uh, before Ned, but then he gets killed. You know, we went over this sort of last... Yep. Last time. Comes out and says, give me the prince. Yeah. yeah. Dumbass. Fucking idiot. Hothead. Let me see. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Nine, ten of storm. Please hold. Do, 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 and then when, yeah. Got it. So... The idea here... Gotta finish the song! <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm just kidding. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so this is on page nine. Omen must drink. Oh, oh. Yep. Cheers. 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 Omen must drink. Omen must drink. Oh, we have some more in the refrigerator of this non-alcoholic uh, beverage. Excellent, because yep. I destroyed mine. You do like your cold beverages, Debbie. I do like my cold beverages. So then uh, he meets with Catelyn and Ned in that brothel, right? And they show him the dagger. Oh, yes. Yep. This little finger quipped, uh, flipped the knife casually end over end. A sweet piece of steel, but it cuts two ways, my lord. Uh, and then so they're talking about the the dagger. Um, let's see. Ned regarded him coldly. Lord Baelish, I am a Stark of Winterfell. My son lies crippled, perhaps dying. He would be dead, and Caitlin with him, but for a wolf pup we found in the snow. If you truly believed, I could forget that. You are as big a fool now as you were when you took up a sword against my brother. A fool I may be, Stark, yet I'm still here, while your brother has been moldering in his frozen grave for some fourteen years now. If you are so eager to molder beside him, far be it from me to dissuade you. But I would rather not be included in the party. Thank you very much. Um, and then, you know, he calls, he says things like, I always found you Starks a tiresome lot, but Kat seems to have become attached to you for reasons I cannot comprehend. I shall have to try to keep you alive for her sake. A fool's task, admittedly, but I could never refuse your wife anything. Peter hates the Starks. He got into a fight with Brandon Stark over Catelyn, a, a guy that was a man grown when he was just a little, like he's always been a little dude and he's just a little guy and he's so in love with Catelyn that he challenges her betrothed to a duel. He loses it terribly and is banished. Catelyn doesn't see him after Brandon cuts him open and he has to be healed up by the maesters. He then gets shipped off back to Littlefinger, to the Little Fingers where his family has holdings, and Catelyn doesn't see him again until that moment in Game of Thrones. And what I want to say is that Peter has carried a torch for her his whole life, and he has accumulated wealth and prestige and a place in the world, and then orchestrated the death of her husband that she loves to free her up. I don't think he has an end game. I think all the pieces are always changing. Yeah. But I think that that's what he's working towards. That's why he gets Lysa uh, to write the letter, to bring Catelyn down, to get her within his grasp. Because now he's a powerful man. Now he has connections. He has means. He can make something happen, but he needs to see this woman that he loves so desperately again. And I think it, it bleeds over into what eventually happens between him and Sansa. He tries to marry Sansa at one point. He offers himself through Sansa being a complete moron, which is what she is for most of the book. And it's not until she turns into a lane that I think she gets any better. She blabs to Dantos about how she's going to marry the Tyrell guy, the crippled Tyrell Willem Uh, or something. Or Wilfred or whatever. Willem, that's right. Um, And she's like, oh, don't even worry about saving me anymore. I'm going to go marry the Tyrell guy. So Dantos tells Littlefinger, who tells Tywin, and Tywin arranges the marriage between Tyrion and and Sansa Sansa before Sansa can get married in secret to the Tyrell guy because Sansa can't keep her fucking mouth shut about anything. Mm -hmm. Before any of that happens, Peter offers himself to Cersei to marry. Well, I'll marry the girl, he says. He also, is, this, 
This is before Kate, Caitlin's dead, too. This even. is before Caitlin's dead, yeah. But she's off in River Run and far away. And I think Sansa is now approaching the age that Catelyn was when Peter fell in love with her so madly. And I think that there's some weird overlapping, some real gray area between, you know, his actual, I think he, I think he has actual love, uh, you know, underneath all of his sarcasm and all of his, you know, witticisms, you don't think he's so. carrying a torch for Cat. Yeah, but then, so why would he try to marry her daughter? Because I think Lust, he's trying is it lustfulness? to... lustfulness? Does he, does he see I think Sansa like and part. go, holy crap. That's the girl I remember from 14 years ago. I think it's the life he's always wanted and always dreamed of. It is this, his heart's secret desire was to have Catelyn to wife mm -hmm. and to have a life with her. And through Sansa, he's like filling, he's fulfilling some of this fantasy, right? Like he's at the, he's simultaneously pretending that she is the daughter he might have had with Catelyn. Right. And that she is Catelyn at that time. He says to her at one point, older men make better lovers, or, you know, that's not an exact quote, but the idea is that older men make for better husbands than young men. Right. Um, and, <clears throat> and you see him uh, really sort of, I think, trying to get Sansa to genuinely love him, to need him, but he's also molding her. He's teaching her about the Game of Thrones as a protege, as right. a daughter, as a woman that, you know, will... He says at one point, <clears throat> with my wits and Catelyn's beauty, there's nothing in these seven kingdoms that you can't have. And I think he means that. Right. Uh, but it's an interesting, he's playing out some childhood fantasy. So imagine, Dave, <clears throat> I don't know why I have a tickle in my throat. That's <clears throat> right. I actually have a little Do one, Do you think too. it's because we don't have any vodka in our drinks? Do we need the alcohol to clear our systems? Uh, it, does this grape juice have a lot of sugar in it? I don't know. Uh. It's in. It's not my usual, like Ocean Spray preferred, uh, grape juice. It's probably Costco, which is a fine thing. It but tastes I'm just like. Not used to it. it tastes good. Yeah. That's not vodka. No, I know it's the lemonada. I'm thinking maybe it'll. I just added a little more bubbly lemons to my mocktini. I don't know. But, um, so imagine that you're in love, right? When you're a kid. No. Ah. I was never in love when I was a kid. Oh, but, but you have to be able to use your imagination. Okay, Dave. okay, okay, hold on. You have to be in able a, to In to a world <laughs> where Dave was in love as a kid. <laughs> Tana's story about Peter Baelish. Also known as Littlefinger. <laughs> the story of love. So this is the story, okay? okay? This is the actual written event. All right, hit me okay, with it. Okay, of, of what happened between Brandon and Peter okay. when they were kids. It's page 367 in the hardcover in Game of Thrones. It's a Catelyn chapter. Okay. Uh, she remembers it as vivid as if it had been yesterday. They met in the lower bailey of River Run. When Brandon saw that Peter wore only helm and breastplate and mail. Proud of you. Yeah, thanks. He took off most of his armor. Peter had begged her for her favor that he might wear, but she had turned him away. Her lord father promised her to Brandon Stark, and so it was to him that she gave her token. A pale blue hand scarf she had embroidered with the leaping trout of River Run. As she pressed it into his hand, she pleaded with him, He's only a foolish boy, but I have loved him like a brother. It would grieve me to see him die. And her betrothed looked at her with the cool gray eyes of a Stark, and promised to spare the boy who loved her. The fight was, was over almost as soon as it began. Brandon was a man grown, and he drove Littlefinger all the way across the bailey and down the water stair, raining steel on him with every step, until the boy was staggering and bleeding from a dozen wounds. Yield, he called more than once. But Peter would only shake his head and fight on grimly. Like, that's devotion. This kid doesn't, it's so charmingly hopeless. He doesn't have a chance in hell of beating Brandon. And Kat doesn't even give him her favor. Yeah. So, like, he has no chance. She doesn't even want you, dude. But he still stubbornly fights on, even after being cut a dozen times. I guess he thinks he's going to prove himself. And, uh... So there's this great, so what I want to say is there's this great, deep, like, bone-deep need for Catelyn's love. And I'm going to say that it's that 
more than anything else in his life that drives him that drives him he would says, you say he's a sociopath no because i think he has feelings i think he feels this love deeply i think he moves in i think some of the moves he makes are sociopathic mm. or unscrupulous i think that they're self-serving and i don't think his enemies varies Tyrion. Uh, anybody on the Ned, Brandon, ever really know him. We are, but I think that the little finger, the Petire, Peter Baelish that we're seeing through this, the Elaine chapters is actually Peter. Peter. And George does this really awesome thing. When Sansa starts feeling nervous or skeeved out by him, his name becomes Littlefinger. Yeah. She looks at him or he looks at her with Littlefinger's eyes. But when she's feeling warm and, you know, uh, kind toward him, he's Peter Baelish, or she thinks of him as my father. Like, in her thoughts, not just, you know, she becomes Elaine. Right. He, like, taps her breast at one point and says, you know, you need to love me even here, even in your heart. You need to always be my daughter. And I think we start seeing her uh, really... Transform yeah. into that, yeah. And the closer... So, I hate Sansa. I think she is in the running with Queen, Mad Queen Cersei for my least favorite character. And I and I, I know that she has a lot of, like, there are a lot of Sansa apologists out there, and I totally get it. I'm finally starting to be able to bear her. When she becomes Elaine. When she becomes Elaine. Well, she kind of gets smart when she becomes Elaine. Yep. I don't know how. Yep. But, you know, it's like all of a sudden she... Yep. I listed you know, some differences in them, but this is, so let's finish this. Okay. Um, so yield, yield, and he won't. He's bleeding from a dozen places, right? And then he says, um, uh, he would only shake his head and fight on grimly. When the river was lapping at their ankles, Brandon finally ended it with a brutal backhand cut that bit through Peter's rings and leather and into the soft flesh below the ribs, so deep that Caitlin was sure that the wound was mortal. He looked at her as he fell and murmured, Cat, as the bright blood came flowing out between his mailed fingers. She thought that she had forgotten that. That was the last time she had seen his face, until the day she was brought before him in King's Landing. A fortnight passed before Littlefinger was strong enough to leave River Run, but her lord father forbade her to visit him in the tower where he lay abed. Lysa helped their maester nurse him. She had been softer and shyer in those days. Ed Muir had called on him as well, but Peter had sent him away. Her brother had acted as Brandon's squire at the duel, and Littlefinger would not forgive him for that. As soon as he was strong enough to be moved, Lord Hoster Tolly sent Peter Baelish away in a closed litter to finish healing on the fingers upon the windswept jut of rock where he'd been born. That's the last time they see each other. He's mortally wounded, fighting for her honor, her favor, her love, and then connives, you know, through all these like machinations that Lysa, you know, laid right, out for right. us earlier to get Catelyn to come to King's Landing and to organize Eddard's death. I think it was him that whispered to Joffrey, you should, you know, traitors don't deserve mercy. And that because um, in the text it says, Ilian Payne almost expected to chop off his head. Varys is like, no, no, and he gets up and he's like running across yeah. um, the, what is it, Baylor's Sept? Right. The stairs of the Sept, the High Septon starts freaking out, Cersei's freaking out, but Ilian Payne, um, the froggy guy, what's his name, the butcher there, he gets sent to the wall because of it. Oh, I can't remember his name, but the guy, the, the gold cloaks leader, oh, oh, Jane oh, is Slint. Jane, yeah, Slint. Slint knew. Uh, so I think that they, they had premeditated that. Um, and I think Varys figures it out by the, by the end. You know, who really killed Eddard Stark, he says to Tyrion at one point. And I think it was Peter. I think Peter was like, fuck this, I'm going to have this guy killed. Uh, cats within my power and widowhood becomes her. I've already killed, you know, one Stark has already been in the ground for 14 years. Why not the next? Yeah. Uh, and then I think he just shifts his plans over to Sansa. But he's living out this, this is the like pivotal moment of his life that, that colors everything else he does, I think. So he's out to get revenge on the older Starks. Yep. He hates the Tullys too. Because Hoster Tully... Uh, banished him, and right. Ed Muir was the squire for uh, for Brandon during their duel. And um, uh, Heron Hal, 
is the liege lord or the the lord of all the river lords so whoever has heron hall is the like big leader so river run would have to do service to uh heron hall and he is in name at least the lord, lord of, of heron hall so right. this is um this is all stuff that like there's when Tyrion is talking to Littlefinger and doing that switcheroo, like he tells Littlefinger that he's sending Marcella to Dorne, mm -hmm. he tells Varys he's selling Tommen to Dorne, and then right. he tells Pycelle that, you know, however it works out, whoever, you know, gets it. Um, but he has that trick. He tells Peter that he's going to give him Harrenhal. I think that's when the seed of being the lord of Harrenhal gets planted in, in Petire's brain. And you see him light up like a kid in a candy store. He's like, oh, that's perfect. Because he's always been under, he's never good enough, right? He's from this shitty little place. Right. And he has no power. And his class, his status, his social status kept him from everything he ever wanted. And now he's being handed the castle that rules them all, including Hoster Tolly, who, you know, said it was, he was, it was beneath him to marry uh, his daughter, Kat. So that's what I think. I mean, a lot of people think that Pataira is like this super evil, uh, you know, mastermind behind everything from the seasons changing to everyone dying. And it's all part of his like wringing his hands, evil machinations. And I just think he's a very calculated dude. And once you start seeing how he is with Sansa, it makes sense why he's doing all this stuff. Yeah. He's playing out this childhood love. Like imagine, so imagine that you're a kid, right? And you're in love with this woman and she's your everything. She's your whole life and you love her and it's everything for you. And then her boyfriend kicks the shit out of you. Beats the shit out of you. Her dad <laughs> you get banished. banishes you from, yep. the, from the area. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Well, you turn into an evil mastermind, mad scientist dude who gets revenge and gets your woman. Yeah, and you get you get yourself back and then like and now you meet like when he first hangs out with Ned and he's throwing all those barbs at him and he's like, "Oh, I thought the heat would melt you Starks and, you know, I'm sure Cat talks a lot about me and I've always wanted to meet you." And like he must have so much loathing for this guy. Yeah. He wasn't even Ned wasn't even supposed to marry Cat. It was his dumbass hothead brother who got himself murdered. And then Ned inherits the love of his life. Cat gets shipped off to the frigid north. And, uh, yeah, he probably hates this guy. He's like, yeah. you don't even love her. Yep. You inherited her. Yep, you inherited her. Do you have any idea what what I've gone through to be with Cat? And now I think he's playing out this whole, like, Catelyn love, you know, situation with Sansa. And, and so interestingly, Sansa and Elaine, the only redemptive quality to Sansa is Elaine Stone. Oh, yeah, I absolutely. finally start liking her because she becomes Elaine Stone. She's a naive little rip God. Like just terrible girl. Yep. She is. She's awful. When um let's see. Um so Elaine Stone, good character, great character. Yeah. She's level headed, sensible, she's a uh, pragmatic a I mean, little, a little bit bold. She talk, she talks to herself a lot in yeah. her chapters, yeah. at, or at least in her head. Yeah. And what she says is like, oh, maybe I shouldn't say that, mm -hmm. or maybe I should say this, maybe I should do that because this will happen. She starts when, playing a part. She yeah. Starts, when when you know, she's Sansa, she's just yeah. like, ah, la, 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 yeah. like fucking garbage coming out yeah. of her mouth. Yeah. Shut your stupid face, Sansa. Uh, she's mistrustful. Finally. You know, she's not just handing Cersei the world on a platter, which yeah. I can't blame Sansa for too much. She was a kid, and she was a privileged, highborn kid who didn't know any better. You know, you like, know. she doesn't deserve what she got. She doesn't. But I still blame her for tattling on the fact that they were going to leave, and, you know, you, you, killed your, you killed your father. If anybody killed Ned, it was you, you dummy. Well... And Peter Baelish, of I course. I know. And it's not fair at all. It's not a fair assessment, even a little bit, but that's just how I think. Uh, but so Elaine Stone is uh, a little bit conniving, um, maybe, but above everything else, she's clever. You know, if you guys have read the Elaine chapter of the sample chapter release from Winds of Winter, it's her idea to have all the winged knights come and have a tourney, you know, the winged knights for... Um, 
for Sweet Robin. For, for Robert, right. Robin. And there's 64 courses and 64 champions. The entire Vale rallies. Peter gets behind it immediately, and they all come. And it was her fucking idea. She's clever. She's cunning. She's mistrustful and calculated. I mean, she's becoming a little, little finger. You a know? little, little finger. Yeah. Or and, Miss yeah. Little Finger. She's um, Mrs. She, little Finger. So Peter, Elaine obviously Peter. Baelish. Peter wants her maidenhead, right? Oh, absolutely. But he's not going to get it because she's going to be betrothed to Harry the heir. So Harry needs to marry a maid, right? But but Peter thinks. So Peter was super drunk that time and slept with Lysa, but he thought it was Cat. Yeah. Right. Um, do you want to read? Do you have any interest in reading? Sure. Um, I like to read. Is, not really. Let me see. There's a. Let's see. One. Hold on one second. I have to find it though, um, because the the scene is when um, it's in the end of sword storm right before Peter comes into the throne room with the butthole door, uh, the butthole of the Irie. The butthole yeah. of the Irie. And uh, you can do this uh, in your craziest Lysa voice <laughs> if you want. It's um, this is you know so it's. It's Lysa talking to Sansa in the butthole room, in the butthole door room, about to push her out, and she's sort of slipping. She's drunk, right? She's been in the wine, and she's slipping in and out of what's real. Like, she starts talking to Sansa as if Sansa were Cat, and Cat were 18 again or whatever, and she's like, I remember, but you don't remember, do you? Uh, you enticed him, but it was me, and he got super drunk, and then I slept with him, and he called out your name, but I don't care. He kissed me, Sansa insisted again. I never wanted. Be quiet! I haven't given you leave to speak. You enticed him. Yes. Just as your mother did that night in yes. River Run. Her smiles and her dancing. You think I could forget? <laughs> That was the night I stole up to his bed to give him comfort. Yeah, he did. I bled. Oh. But it was the sweetest hurt. <laughs> you kind of sound like a Muppet. <laughs> you kind of sound like a monster Muppet. He told me. <laughs> he loved me. He called out to me. He, but he called me Cat. Just before he fell back to sleep. Even so... I stayed with him until the sky began to lighten. <laughs> Your mother did not deserve him. Yeah. So he gets Lysa's maidenhead, not Cat's. But yeah. he thinks it's Cat because he's super, he's stone drunk. Like uh, Brendan the Blackfish carries him up to bed before Hoster Tolly could come. Actually, it's the, the Brackens and the Blackwoods. The Brackens Blackwoods. and the Blackwoods. Yeah, they were fighting and they're, you know, bannermen to... Hoster Tully, so they came to argue in front of their liege lord. Uh -huh. And when it gets too heated in the, you know, main, like, dining room, then they go into the solar to talk about it and leave the kids alone with a pitcher of wine. And so they Peter all get drunk. It. Yeah. And uh, Peter drank so much. Oh, yeah, because Catelyn wouldn't kiss him back or something. Do you... <clears throat> Does it say? It's like she... You know, he was still feeling, like, uh, rejected by her. It wasn't the day of the fight, but it was some other... Yeah, it says, uh, your mother did not deserve him. She would not even give him her favor to wear when he fought Brandon Stark. Mm -hmm. I would have given him my favor. I gave him everything. <laughs> and that's when she, like, did a little shaking of the butt, like, yeah. I gave him everything. Yeah, even the moon door of my door. I had him every way. Every way a man could have a woman. <laughs> He is mine now, not Caitlyn's, and not yours. <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrifying if she actually sounded like that. <laughs> you said to do it in my most terrifying I think you've voice. succeeded in frightening us all, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> My mission is complete here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. Uh. Yep. And so, yeah, she, um, so Catelyn never loved Peter. Wait, more. so is that confirmed? She gave so, him, yeah. she gave him her moon door? Yeah, her, her moon door. Yeah, oh wow. <laughs> I don't know. It's definitely her maiden door, but, uh, as for the moon door, 
I don't think. I don't know. We don't. I don't do we think hear about any uh, ever uh, butt sex in the Game of Thrones? There's that great scene where Dario and Daenerys are getting down, and George writes that he had her every way a man can have a woman, which, to my mind, also includes Moondor action. Moondor. So Got some Moondor action. That's that's Woo! one of the ways that a man can have a woman. Or a person can have a person, but that's how it's written, guys. Don't yeah. blame the messenger. I'm all about, you know, ladies having ladies every way a lady can be had, but, you know. Well, ladies can have all the ladies through the moon door. That's I how mean, it's written. There's... Right, I'm saying it's not gender prohibitive. No, it's... it's yeah. Butt sex is not gender prohibitive. Yeah. Everything, everyone loves some right. butt sex. Well, just... well, not everyone loves <laughs> butt sex, but everyone with a butt could have the butt sex. <laughs> Everyone with a moon door can I'm have... I'm so glad that we're, like, explicit rated, because it always gets gross up in here. <laughs> and I think, ladies and gentlemen, after hitting an hour and yeah. 27 seconds and a nice little talk about butt sex, we oh. successfully talked about Peter. Yep, and I only have one more thing, because food is the best part, so I want to leave us on a... on a My favorite description of food, which is actually from the Winds of Winter so, chapter. So, just like in Donnie Darko or in Clerks... Where you never go ass to mouth, we are now going ass to mouth with the butthole and the butt sex to food. <laughs> yeah, ass to mouth. Ass to That's mouth. Right. We're going ass to mouth. And then in Clark's, they right do the wipe the yeah, glass so, and the so, peanut, yes, the, some, the pretzels or something. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's not that's clerks. That's um, the mall, uh, mall, mall rats. rats. Mall rats. Yeah. Man, uh, flashback to high school. God, Tara. Kevin Smith. Shout Ooh. out to you. Man, I was all about those movies when I was in high school. Dude, you know he's making a Mallrats 2, right? I did not and know And he that. just, he, he's making Clerks 3, Mallrats 2, and he just released a new Didn't movie. Did he say that he was called... only going to make one more movie ever? No. Well, he did. He, did he might have that. said that after Tusk, because Tusk was like really fucking weird, and yeah. he, he admits it was pretty fucking weird. <laughs> but and he, I'm all for he it, just, man. You're allowed to change your mind. He just, more... he just made another movie called yeah. Yoga Hosers. It just went to Sundance. Yeah. It's, it, he Yoga basically, Hosers? Yeah. The way he writes it as he says that it's the movie that I would have wanted to see when I was a 12-year-old girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> his words, yep. not mine. Great. Uh, quoted directly listen. from many of his podcasts that I listen mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. um, but Yoga awesome. Hosers, it's got his daughter and Johnny Depp's daughter in it and uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Nice. It just went to Sundance. Um, it's apparently going to be coming out sometime soon. But he's, he made that. Yep. And then he's also, he was in, he's been in the process of writing and shooting. I don't know if he shot yet, but writing Mallrats 3 and Clerks. Mall, Mallrats 2 and Clerks It'll 3. It'll be interesting to see so. as an adult and like a mature filmmaker and a man at sort of the height of his game. You know, he's not, this isn't the Clerks where a kid is just trying to scrabble it together. I don't know. If you saw Tusk, I wouldn't say it's the height of his game. Yeah. I mean, maybe... Man, it's a, it's a fucked up movie. I... Wasn't Red State also super fucked up? Yeah. He had a, he had a, a couple... Maybe he's gone through a dark phase. Well, you know, he went through the phase of, like, he wanted to do stuff... He, he never really did, like, box office things, and then yeah. he helped write, um... Fuck. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. He, he did a couple, like, big, 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 like studio movies and yeah. he was like it's stupid I don't want to do it anymore yeah. anyway anyway back to Peter Baelish and not Kevin yeah. Smith yep so uh, let's go to food the yep. butt description to of food butt ass to mouth, mouth. <laughs> ass to mouth can we just call it butt to mouth hole <laughs> butt to mouth hole alright butt to <laughs> here's our go. butt to mouth hole the butt to mouth hole here's All the right. mouth hole uh, this is from the Winds of Winter sample chapter uh, so spoilers but you guys already knew that. Yeah, it's spoilers. Come on. The feast proved to be everything her father promised. This is Elaine thinking about Peter Baelish. 64 dishes were served in honor of the 64 competitors who had come so far to contest for the silver wings before their lord. From the rivers and the lakes came pike and trout and salmon. From the seas, crabs and cod and herring. Ducks were there and capons, peacocks in their plumage, and swans in almond milk. Suckling pigs were served up crackling with apples in their mouths, and three huge oryx were roasted whole above fire pits in the castle yard since they were too big to get through the kitchen doors. Loaves of hot, hot bread filled the trestle tables in Lord Nestor's hall, and massive wheels of cheese were brought up from the vaults. The butter was fresh churned, and there were leeks and carrots and roasted onions, beets, turnips, parsnips, and best of all, Lord Nestor's cooks prepared a splendid subtlety, 
a lemon cake in the shape of the giant's lance, twelve feet tall and adorned with an iry made of sugar. How awesome does that dessert sound? So Sansa's favorite thing made For- into a giant cake yeah. with an iry made of sugar. A butthole <laughs> made of sugar. There could be like little like lemon drop shots coming out of the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's really an oversight. I'm gonna assume it's in he meant to put it in and it's just it's just assumed. It's just assumed. It yeah, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. of course. So imagine that. For me, Elaine thought as they wheeled it out. Sweet Robin loved lemon cakes too, but only after she had told him that they were her favorites. The cake had required every lemon in the veil, but Patire had promised that he would send to Dorne for more. Which proves that Dorne is where you get lemons. Yeah. So, more wow. further proof. Wow, we're going full circle around yeah. that. Yeah. The only place that the you can get lemons. The only place is, is in Dorne. And he specifically, he doesn't say, oh, I'll get more lemons. He says, I'll send to Dorne for more lemons. Because if you're going to make a 12-foot tall lemon cake, right? Holy crap. Just imagine that. You're six feet tall. That's you, a big fucking cake. Plus you standing on your own shoulders. Plus, how big do you think the iry is on the side of it? The sugar iry with the dripping moon door. It's got to be big. Man, and it would be like an ice luge well, almost. You just put your little shot glass or your little drinking horn under there. And, drip, and get drip, a little drip. lemon drop. Lemon drop shots would have been good or whatever we did. You know, your uh, vodka and limonada. Yeah. Obviously, that's what they would use. Obviously. Because I mean, they, cause they, no they listen to our podcast. Yeah. Peter listens to our podcast. He would. Why wouldn't he? He wants yeah. to know He wants all to know everything. Things. Vars would also listen to yep. our podcast. Yep. Yeah. But how cute was it when Vars like sidles up? You know, he like, he sneaks closer when Ned starts talking to Littlefinger He's about... Like, ooh, yeah. drama. Because <laughs> he doesn't know a lot about Peter. Peter is always saying things like, you know, don't let your enemies know what moves you. When you know what a man wants, you know how to move him. Yeah. And I think this is the secret of his life. I think he wants Catelyn Stark, yeah. or now in our case, Elaine, yeah. or or. And he tells Sansa. Sansa that she's more beautiful than her mother was at that age. So I think he's he's got that fantasy, right, of yep. the life he wanted to live with Cat. Absolutely. And have a family and have a daughter in a different world, in a better world. You would have been mine and not Ed's Ned Stark's. You know, really believe you're my daughter in your heart. And like, and he's tutoring her. He's making her, you know, she, he's giving his gifts to his protege, who's his daughter. But then there's also this little finger shit, right? Um, on that same page, he says, or uh, in that same chapter, she says, uh, he looks at her. It's been little finger or it's been um, Peter Baelish, Peter Baelish, Peter Baelish the whole time or my father. Uh, Petire put his arm around her. And he's talking about Harry the heir. Um, he has a weakness for pretty for a pretty face, and whose face is prettier than yours? Charm him, entrance him, bewitch him. I don't know how, she said miserably. Oh, I think you do, said Littlefinger, with one of those smiles that did not reach his eyes. You will be the most beautiful woman in the hall tonight, as lovely as your lady mother at your age. I think when he looks at her like that, and she, you know, specifically, he looks at her with little fingers eyes, not her father's eyes. I yeah. think that's lust. I think those are the moments she compares him at one of these moments with Marillion, who tried to rape her mm-hmm. uh, during Peter's wedding, you know, situation. Um, but so I think whenever he feels like lust and Sansa recognizes that, he becomes Littlefinger. And otherwise, he's this other character who's her father, Father, her surrogate father. And he's playing out this whole weird family drama. But there are a lot of people that think, you know, he's this super evil guy. And I think he is really unscrupulous. But here's the key to understanding why... What drives him, yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and in the future, what do you think... Where do you see him playing out? Well, I mean, I don't really know. I think he's, I think he's one of the characters that I just can't predict his future because, I mean, I, I definitely think he's going to do whatever he can to stay with Sansa. Yeah, I think right? so too. And I think there's that prophecy, the giant in Winterfell or whatever, the um, the Lady of High Heart. <clears throat> it's Paige. Do you uh, think do you think Littlefinger is the is the giant? 
So she makes the snow castle, Winterfell, yeah. when Peter kisses her. Sweet Robin comes in with his baby doll. Right. right. And he says, a giant! And he starts, like, smashing that's the walls. That's right, that's right. And she rips off the doll's head by accident. Like, he pulls, uh-huh. you know, Sweet right, Robin. Right, right, right. Well, uh, this is... So the dwarf of High Heart in Storm of Swords on 4... What do I have here? 491 in your hardcover. It says this. And this is maybe a key to figuring out what's going on with Peter... Because does Sansa kill Petire? We don't... I don't know. Uh, The Dwarf of High Heart. I dreamt a wolf howling in the rain, but no one heard his grief. The dwarf woman was saying, I dreamt a clangor, I thought my head might burst. Drums and horns and pipes and screams, but the saddest sound was the little bells. I dreamt of a maid at a feast with purple serpents in her hair, venom dripping from their fangs. And later I dreamt that maid again, slaying a savage giant in a castle built of snow. She turned her head sharply and smiled through the gloom right at Arya. You cannot hide from me, child. Come closer now. Well, it's, I mean, that's clearly Sansa. It's Sansa. I mean, absolutely. And, you know, a maid with, um, with venom in her hair or serpents in her hair, venom dripping from the that's fangs. Sansa that's Sansa at the Red, at the, right. not the Red Wedding, but yeah. Joffrey's Wedding. Yeah. yeah. And, and it says, I dreamt... That maid that again, maid, yeah. slaying a savage giant in a castle built of snow. Now, a lot of people think Gregor Clegane maybe, or is Littlefinger the giant she slays, you know, mm. takes her to Winterfell or something. What if we go back to our Winterfell episode, and there's that undead... By the way, the most popular episode we've ever I done. I know, and I thought it was like, I was sick, you know, I was like... No, that was a good episode. That was a good episode. Yeah, but, really good episode. but we talked about the magic door, and we talked about the possible other That's under right. there. What if the giant she slays in the castle... I mean, it could just be simply what we saw, the castle in the snow. Yeah, but I and... think it could be. But I think maybe that's a red herring. It just seems too simplistic, mm. you know? Um, but, but Dave, you... And later I dreamt that maid again, slaying a savage giant in a castle built of snow. What if when the other, the king other, oh, what if when the king other comes up out of the ground, if he does, all the Starks have to band together to kill him. And so Sansa is somehow involved in this big, so it's not just Jon Snow or Azor High. What if it's like Bran and Rickon and Sansa and Arya and there's a giant battle at Winterfell? Wouldn't that be dope? It'd be pretty crazy. But like a lot of people think it's going to be, you know. Peter? Gregor Clegane or Petire, and I don't know. I mean, you can't. We can't know. There isn't enough information. But right. that's like a clue of what's coming. You know, a giant. Oh, and well, um, oh, and they think it's Petire, a giant in a castle, because when he comes into her castle, um, the snow castle, he's like, "Oh, is this Winterfell? Um, I've always wondered what it looked like. He looked like a giant." She describes Littlefinger as a giant stepping over the walls of Winterfell. And he says something like, Winterfell has withstood, you know, more dangerous foes than me, I'm sure. You know, like, and so, but he's identified as a giant entering the castle, so the imagery would work that way. I think that's why so many people think that this prophecy is about him. And I could see it, but... Well, listeners, you tell us what you think. We'd love to know. What Peter's future holds. One of the most fascinating characters in the whole story. And I think he's going to be around for a while. I suspect he's going to stick around in the Vale. His plan was to be in the Vale for four or five years before Cersei blew everything up with yeah. her ineptitude. And uh, and he's making plans for the harvest. They're going to be the only place in the Seven Kingdoms well, he's that isn't gonna, he already Well, he stated that he's going to yeah. pick someone else to rule. Yeah. So we'll see. Well... Yeah, I think he's got. I think what he's saying out loud and what he's meaning There's are different. Two different things, I think yeah. he his best chance, right? Because he's never going to be a king. He doesn't have an army of his own, but he's really well positioned as protector of the Vale, Lord Protector of the Vale. He's brought almost every one of the Lord's Declarant around. He's orchestrated really impressive marriages. They have this big. Um, festival this tourney for uh, the winged knights mm-hmm. it's going to be eight of the veils knights who are not allowed to go to war that are now competing in a tournament to win the right to be like the king's guard but it's the winged knight guard of right. sweet robin and so instead of seven king's guard there'll be eight winged knights so all the young men at the veil have turned up 
and he's giving out great, he's being very open-handed. And uh, at one point they say, instead of, you know, Nestor Royce is very open-handed, he's, you know, super generous, and it's like, people are saying, no, it's not Nestor Royce, it's his, he has an open hand and a little finger. Mm. Uh, so people know that all this largesse is it's coming. All, yeah, it's all Peter. Yeah, and so everybody in the Vale is benefiting from his rule. Um, Nestor Royce gets those really nice tapestries that used to belong to a king, plus he gets the Gates of the Moon, uh, Lynn Corbray's It's older almost brother like gets Peter is his puppet master yep. and Royce is the puppet. Yep. Puppet. Yep. Puppeteer. Anyway. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Nerds and neckbeards. Nerds and neckbeards. Thanks for listening to our... Sober. Sober episode. Yeah, our which, sober sister. I guess you can't really say it since we did uh, do we a did shot. We did do a but, shot, but we I weren't mean, come drunk. On. Yeah, it was just a shot. Have we been any more concise, do you no. think? Yeah, I, don't I like, haven't at least. Yeah, we can't like. We can't claim that it's the alcohol. It actually kind of worked against us in the beginning. It I did. Think. Yeah, it did. So, I don't know. Anyway, tell us what you guys think about uh, Peter Baelish or Pentire yeah. if you follow think like Tana. Follow us on the Twitters. Follow us on the Twitters. At Tana Ford. And at Worry with a four instead of an A. W four R R I. Yeah, and we'll post a picture of the doodle I did of the butthole of the Irie, the moon door. You're so gross. I'm such an immature man. So when basically, big, just a man. When we have a big cosplay like house party, let's yeah. make a twelve foot lemon a cake. Twelve foot lemon cake with a little butt on the side. <laughs> Maybe a smaller one. Maybe a one foot lemon. A cake. A one foot lemon cake with a little butt on the side. Yeah. I have to. Somebody's gonna have to figure out how to make a sugar castle, a sugar spire. I'm sure you could Pinterest it. Yeah. That's the Reddit for yeah. girls. <laughs> the Reddit for girls. <laughs> Up with that, or did somebody? No, I, that? Come, I came up with that. It's the Reddit for girls. That's brilliant. That's, That's brilliant. I mean, it's, it's so basically true. what it is. Yeah, That's what it is. <laughs> all right, folks, thanks for tuning in, and we'll Good see night. you next time. Just remember that all men must drink.